Right, good evening. Good evening, everybody. I, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for tonight's webinar. Uh, my name is Steve West. I am a Knowledge Exchange Manager at AHDB Dairy. And um, tonight's webinar is on the practical use of sex semen in block calving herds. I welcome Dave Gilbert from Horizon Vets, who has uh, a good amount of experience of dairy farms in a variety of systems. And we are also pleased to welcome Tim Downs, who farms 450 spring calving cows organically and has now used sex semen for many years. And also Tristan Dale, who farms 320 um, organic spring block calving cows in Shropshire uh, and has just started using sex semen. So, um, in a moment, I'm going to introduce Dave uh, to, and, and welcome Dave to, to commence. Um, but uh, Dave's going to present for about 25 minutes um, only, and there'll be plenty of time for comments and questions all the way through. Um, and uh, at the end, we'll have 20 minutes for questioning the whole panel, including Tim and Tristan. Um, everybody will be muted throughout the webinar, so please don't worry if the dog barks or something like that. You, we won't be able to hear you. Nobody can hear you. Uh, but you can ask a question. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the panel, and you can ask a question um, uh, just by clicking on the question box and typing it in all the way through. Only we can see those. Um, I'll ask the team the questions at the appropriate time. And we are aiming to finish uh, at the latest at 8 p.m. So um, we have one microphone between the four of us. So uh, we will uh, conduct the, the relevant acrobatics to, to do that. But if we do um, have any problems um, in terms of technical difficulty, please just bear with us and we will get it back on the road as soon as possible. So the first thing I really want to mention um, is that today is not about promoting a product. Uh, we, we don't work for the semen companies, uh, and um, today is about, uh, about principles. So um, if some of the points that we're using are from a, a, a specific company, um, we're in no way favoring that particular company. And I'd really like to thank uh, Cogent and Genus uh, for their inputs into today's webinar. Um, and, uh, and I've seen plenty of compelling evidence to do with the, the new technology and conception rates. So uh, I'd like to just start off very quickly by, um, one second, uh, starting with the first slide, um, which just outlines, um, part. this is part of a much bigger campaign. Now, um, we are in the, um, the advent of, of a new era, really, within dairy, whereby our consumers are becoming ever more focused on the way we farm and the justification of the manner in which we farm. And what we've come up with is a Breed for Better Twitter campaign uh, which is aimed at um, really trying to uh, generate a, an industry-owned um, uh, campaign that highlights messages around using sex semen in every type of carving system. What we'd like to get to is a point where farmers who are thinking about using sex semen within their carving system can type that breed for better uh, campaign into Twitter and can see the anecdotal evidence uh, provided by farmers who are currently using it. So it's an online library. Uh, so um, this is starting today. It's going to be a 12 month uh, campaign. And what you can do is you can use this uh, hashtag uh, to promote positive messages of using sex semen. And I emphasize the positive um, and to highlight good performance from beef from dairy calves. So um, without further ado, I'd, I'd like to just pass on to, uh, to my peer here, Dave, um, Dave Gilbert, who is going to introduce um, uh, his presentation. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Dave Gilbert. 
I'm a practicing vet, uh, predominantly working with block carb dairy herds up in Cheshire and Shropshire. I've been doing that for several years now, so I guess that's probably why HDB asked me to come and speak about the practical role of sex semen in that sort of system today. Um, I'm also a senior lecturer at Harbour Adams University. Um, I guess uh, this is my first time doing a webinar. I'm usually in my element with a flip chart and a group of farmers interacting with people. So please bear with me this evening. Um, uh, I'm currently staring at a laptop without anybody, the whites of their eyes that I can see, with a variety of uh, strange dashboards and uh, question panels in front of me. Um, so if I go a bit hesitant at any stage, I will come back to you. It just means I'm, I'm flapping with the technology. So I suppose the first thing I wanted to talk about tonight was really the potential role of sex semen um, for anybody, whether they're on a more conventional uh, dairy system or whether you're block carving. And there's lots of different reasons we may choose to, to avail ourselves of sex semen. But I suppose I've, I've split this up really into three broad headings because I think it's important that we focus on the why we might choose to do things first um, before we start to think about how it might fit for each of us. So first up, and there's lots of farmers up and down the country who've made use of sex semen for these reasons. The herd expansion is always a challenging issue. The way most of us farm, the way that we um, uh, breed heifers, um, we gear ourselves up to be self-sustaining. And if we want to radically change the size and the nature of our herd, it can be quite tough to generate those animals without going out and buying them. Lots of research has been done looking at the role of sex semen. The graphic you've got in front of you here is a study uh, performed at Chogas out in Ireland, looking at uh, the use of sex semen uh, to expand the herd. So here on the left hand side, you can see the herd starts off with 100 cows in year zero um, and sort of 30 um, 30 heifer calves um, and different strategies using either conventional semen, the, the lines with the triangles, or sexed semen, the lines with the, the sort of circles, and the impact that has without going out and buying animals on, on herd expansion and on the generation of heifers. Um, the particular study in question went on to look at the economics of that and showed a substantial improvement in terms of the farm profitability and the economics associated with the use of, of sexed semen to expand that herd versus conventional semen. So if you're thinking about herd expansion, if for one reason or another you're struggling to generate enough heifers, I think there's plenty of evidence out there to say that sex semen is a good economical tool to help you with those challenges. I suppose the next area which can be a little bit more intangible I just wanted to talk about was the role of sex semen in genetic advancement. So particularly now with the use of genomics increasing we get talked to a lot about the potential role of genetics in improving our herd performance. Um, and this, the graphic you've got in front of you here is, um, is some data of mine from some large high yielding type herds, just looking at the yield variation within those herds to demonstrate we see a very high uh, degree of uh, diversity within the population. And you'll see an awful lot of uh, discussion uh, these days about the potential way in which if we can identify our best animals, whatever whatever scale, whatever metric we use to define best, be that our most fertile, be that our most robust, be that our highest yielding, whatever, whatever system and, and metrics you choose to use. But if we can define which our best animals are and we can increase their genetics within our herd, the potential impact that can have on um, on advancement in performance of that herd. 
So I guess, again, although it can be a little intangible, if we have the data available to us, either through, you know, simplistic phenotypic type assessments we make, um, herd recording data, stuff like that, through um, herd genetic indexes, um, some of the data that you can find through HDB, um, through genomic testing, and we can identify which our best animals are, then I think absolutely sex semen has a potential role there to ensure as best we can that we perpetuate the genetics of our best animals and we limit the genetics of our worst animals within our future heifer crop and our future herd. Um, I guess the third potential reason people may choose to think about uh, sex semen is, is one of the challenges that we do have as an industry, which is um, we need dairy heifers for the future of our herd. But when we use conventional semen, we do finish up with a degree of dairy bulls as well. And whilst beef bulls are are very uh, valuable potentially to us. Sorry, I'm just reading a question that's just come in. I do apologize, I, I'm just trying to, uh, are we all right with the sound? Sorry guys, we just had a little bit of an issue with the sound, I, I believe it's been sorted out. Um, yeah, so I think we have to acknowledge that that dairy bulls for a variety of reasons aren't particularly attractive to the beef industry um, and that does create us a potentially worthless calf which has a big impact on our calf sale value and calf sales for some farms are a significant component of their overall business performance. Um, and sex semen if carefully managed and we do have some data later on in the presentation to look at that, does potentially convey us an opportunity to breed those dairy heifers we need for the future of our herd without generating the same number of dairy bull calves and potentially producing larger numbers of potentially much more valuable beef uh, animals, which we can then sell to other farms to rear potentially for the beef industry. So there are a number of potential opportunities for sex semen within our businesses. Just hang on guys, we've got more technical problems. <laughs> ah, I'm back working again. Okay, so probably all come across sex semen at some point in the past, and you may have heard lots of negative things about it. So getting into the technical bit of this presentation, the first thing I wanted to say is you'll hear a lot from semen companies at the moment um, about how far sex semen has come over the last 20 years. And, to, and um, uh, sorry, again, I'm just reading a question that's just come in. Um, so, um, so I thought I'd start off by presenting you some data done in the United States looking at, at where sex semen is in terms of comparative conception rates. So the bar chart you've got in front of you is a comparison made in 2017 between conventional semen, between more traditional 2M sex semen, and between the more modern, the buzzword that everybody's banding about at the moment, 4M sex semen. So I think you can see, and we'll come back to it as we go through this presentation. I don't think anybody's saying that sex semen will give you exactly the same conception rates as conventional semen. But sex semen is a slightly different animal than it used to be. It has been improved and the conception rates are better than it used to be. Somebody's asked a question, recent trial in Ireland showed no difference between 2M and 4M sex semen. Thoughts, please. Um, I can only tell you the data that I've seen. You always see some variation trial to trial in how different the results are 
between conventional semen and sex semen. Um, and we'll look at a little bit of that. Um, yes, I have seen some studies where there wasn't very much difference between 2M and 4M sex semen. Um, but I have also seen a number of studies suggesting that 4M sex semen um, does produce higher conception rates um, from a number of countries. So as with all subjects, um, there's always a variation between studies, but I do think 4M sex semen is probably a better product on balance of the evidence. I also think it makes sense as a very practical example, we know that often bulls manage to get cows in calf that that AI doesn't. And there's always a lot of anecdote that maybe that's just because we flood the job with semen and that helps us overcome some of those fertility challenges. So I think it makes sense to me in my own mind that if we give double the amount of sperm to the cow, we have a higher chance of achieving conception. And I think most of the studies I've seen tend to demonstrate that to be true. Um, this, if that makes sense for whoever asked that question. Okay, so what does it look like practically? Well, the next slide I've got for you, and there are two or three versions of very similar studies that have been done in the last two or three years. So this is a study from the States looking at large numbers of heifers on a uh, several farms and the relative conception rates achieved between conventional semen in red and sex semen in the sort of grey blue. Again, same point I've already made. I'm not going to dress it up. You aren't going to achieve quite the same conception rates with sex semen as you will with conventional semen. But the gap is potentially, if used correctly, relatively small. So most of the studies in heifers tend to show only sort of a 5 to 10% difference in conception rate with 4M sex semen versus conventional semen. I'm looking at the two farmers to my right as I'm about to say this. Guys, any comments? Very true from our perspective, uh, Dave. We've trialled both in heifers and uh, in cows. Cows more recently and... Um, that we had good results from those, but uh, heifers has been uh, a little bit um, changeable throughout the years. A, a lot of different effects uh, going on, but no, we're, we're pleased and we'll continue with uh, using sex semen with the heifers. Yeah, um, yeah, Tristan here. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, we, we've tried it on cows, um, and yeah, it, I wouldn't. I, I'd say very similarly. It's not quite as good as conventional, but it's but it's pretty close, really, and, and good enough. Uh, close enough for me to to want to carry on using it really um, we are trying on heifers next year um yeah and i think one of the points that was made there is is a relevant one which is um year to year we're all going to have good years and we're all going to have bad years and and it is important that we give sex semen if we're going to give it a try a, a fair a fair try i know tristan uh, did a small trial himself trying some sex semen and some conventional semen to compare the results directly um but yeah on heifers the studies that have been done uh tend to in indicate that we're looking at um uh, sort of a five to ten percent um reduction i'm reading a comment from ben who i think i know I've used both 2M and 4M sexed on heifers to timed AI this autumn. 4M has outperformed 2M by 9% on first service. Would you expect a smaller gap from natural heats? Um, honest answer, Ben? I, I, I don't know. 9% um, uh, would be similar to the results from that previous study I showed you. I think off the top of my head, there was about a 7% difference there. Um, I'm guessing by the question on natural heats versus, you must have, yeah, you did, you did timed AI. Um, if I'm really honest, I don't know, but I suspect I probably wouldn't expect very much difference. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really have a better answer than that. Um, there's a couple more questions come in, um, but 
if you bear with me, I think I'm going to cover most of your questions a little bit in a couple of slides time, if that makes sense to everybody, rather than keep disrupting. OK, so that was heifers. What does it look like in cows? Well, it looks fairly similar in cows, um, potentially a slightly larger gap. Um, again, two or three different studies have been done. There have been studies in the States. There have been studies in New Zealand. Um, this particular study that we're looking at on the screen is from Ireland again. Um, so this was different bulls, either prepared conventionally or prepared as sexed um, straws, um, inseminated into cows and the relative results. So we're sort of seeing in cows a slightly bigger gap, and that might come down to the inherit uh, fertility of heifers versus cows, but probably in that sort of 10%, 12%, 15% reduction type window. Um, so yeah, slightly reduced conception rates, um, 10 to 15% in cows, 5 to 10% in heifers. Yeah, Tim's just asking me a question to my right. I believe in this study they were all done by an AI technician, and I will get on to the point you're about to ask me about the handling and management of the semen, which is quite important when we talk about sex semen. Okay, so I've given you the data. Why, why should you use it? Why should you think about using it? And I guess there's a very good reason I started this presentation by talking about the different roles for sex semen, because that really comes down to you guys in terms of how it potentially fits as a tool for your businesses. There's lots of potential advantages from using sex semen. We've touched on uh, the roles it may play if we're trying to expand herds, if we're trying to advance the genetics of the herd. Um, We've touched a little bit and we've got a bit of case study data from Tristan looking at the potential impact it might have on calf sales. There's lots of practical reasons. Um, I've dealt over the years with herds who are trying to manage herd expansion and they're trying to manage it by breeding animals for longer to dairy. And that can create real practical challenges around the heifer rearing, disease control when we've got quite spread out blocks amongst the calves. Um, the practicalities of managing daily live weight gains and getting heifers to targets at two years of age, that sort of, um, that sort of challenge. Um, again, I've dealt with herds over time which who are trying to control a variety of diseases. Yonis is a prime example at the moment. And if we start to have highish numbers of Yonis cows within the herd, um, and we've not breeding replacements from those animals, it can just sometimes become a little bit of a challenge working out, well, where are we going to get all of our replacement calves born from? So there's lots of potential different reasons you might choose to use uh, sex semen, but it's really just a question of you thinking through how it would fit within your businesses. Um, planning, and I just wanted to sort of convey a bit of a message here because I, uh, I have a bit of a track record for scrolling numbers at lightning pace onto a flip chart, which I can't really do in front of all you guys tonight. Um, but when I talk to you about the reduction in conception rate, I think there's something for us to get straight in our minds that if we engage in sex semen and we aren't pursuing herd expansion, that does inherently mean that we won't necessarily need to breed all of our animals to sex semen to hit our heifer target number. So what you've got in front of you is um, the four week in calf rate in blue and the number of heifers or so percentage of heifers generated in orange for three different sort of breeding strategies. So the one on the left is is what the vast majority of my customers are going to start doing in the next two or three months, which is just conventional breeding. We're going to identify our bulling cows. We're going to hit our 90 percent submission rate. We're going to serve them to conventional semen and maybe hit a 55, 60 percent conception rate. And that's going to generate as after four weeks, just shy of 60 percent of the, the, the herding calf and something around 28 percent of those animals being in calf to black and white heifers. And 28% by the time we have an odd abortion along the way, 
a calf that doesn't quite make it during the rearing period that probably gets us towards that sort of 20 to 25 percent heifer replacements for the future of our herd the middle bar is putting blanket sex semen across everything it's going to have a bigger impact on our four week calf right tim's rubbing his uh his fingers together thinking about the costs it's not like you to think about the costs tim um um but yeah tim's point is relevant if, if we did that we'd spend a lot of money it would have a relatively large across the board impact on our our in calf rates but it would also generate us a heck of a lot of heifers and unless you're really trying to vastly expand your herd you don't need all those heifers likewise if we just deployed it for the first week or two um it might very well mean, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do this, it might very well mean that we generate a really tight cohort of heifers for the future, but it might also mean that back to our genetics, we miss some of our better cows that just for reason of chance happen not to bull until for the first time week three of the service window. The third bar is taking more of a selective approach to this. So saying, OK, I'm going to define my best cows, uh, however we define that, um, based on, you know, their production numbers, based on um, uh, their, their genetics, based on just the way they look at you in the morning. I'm not really sure. But we're going to define our better animals. We're going to select enough of those animals out based on the conception rates for sex semen. And then all of the lesser animals we're going to breed directly to beef, as an example. I suppose the point I'm trying to get across to you is by the time we've probably bred something around the 40 percent mark of our cows directly to beef. Actually, that significantly lessens the dent in the conception in calf rate numbers. And we still finish up with a very similar number of heifer calves. So in that scenario, we're probably talking about a four to five percent reduction in in-calf rate. And I can't get away from that, really. Um, but certainly a lot better than if we would bred everything to sex semen. So it's just worth getting straight in our minds that if we embark on sex semen, it's not for every cow. We don't need to go that way. Um, and the costings will be slightly different because of it. Just got to battle some technology for a second, guys. Just bear with me. I've got a pop up on my screen that means I can't read my slide. Um, when we think about which cows to select, um, I suppose there's a number of different thought processes here. So lots of dairy farmers in the UK already make use of sex seam. And I think the latest numbers were something around 15 percent of farmers. I'm looking at Steve. <laughs> So there's lots of farmers already using lots of sex semen and and it's certainly true to say that we do tend to see as you if you've seen from the numbers i've already presented better results in heifers than we do in cows whether that's because those animals are under a little bit less pressure whether that's because they're inherently a little bit more fertile is difficult to say but certainly our performance numbers in heifers tend to be better than in cows Second sort of selection criteria you might want to think about are those around sort of health, genetics, herd advancement. So we don't need to breed every one of our cows to sex semen. So do we specifically want to choose to use sex semen on our better cows to improve our herd and potentially define a group of cows that it's not their fault? They're just not genetically wonderful. They're just not our most productive animal and potentially not carry their genetics, their health problems, their confirmation, whatever those things may be forward. The final point, and I'd be interested in the two chaps to my right's feedback at this point in time, would be fertility. And I, I can't put any precision behind this. This is pure anecdote. But there's lots of people around would associate and we'd maybe see that slightly from the heifer versus cow numbers, 
slightly better results with sex semen in more fertile cows. So personally, as an anecdote, I wouldn't go uh, putting sex semen into my cows that I'm struggling to get to cycle. When Tim, do you want to just comment your thoughts? Yeah, first first thoughts from that, Dave, would be um, we, we do a lot of pre-mating checks and bulling checks to make sure that they're actively cycling. So we'd, we'd never use uh, sex semen on anything that um, wasn't uh, actively cycling, wasn't in um, good enough uh, condition to uh, give it the best chance of conceiving at all. We, we want to minimise the, the risk factors of, uh, of not getting a pregnancy. And... Um, yeah, we uh, we go to good extents to make sure that they're they're on a rising plane of nutrition and the the fertility is is there in that animal. Uh, yeah, on a similar point, uh, I think this year we'll do exactly that. Same as Tim. Uh, last year I didn't actually do that, um, and a bit of an oversight. But also I didn't really I needed to pick the difference, which was better whether it was sexed or whether it's conventional. I could only really get a true result if I um, used it evenly across to both groups but um but certainly for next year i think i will be um and also i suppose the other thing is going forward we're, we're looking to go 100 percent sex and those cows they have to hold to every service so i'm hoping year on year um the performance will get better because those offspring will only be born from animals that held the first service um is what i'm hoping yeah so some comments from the guys there and um I don't know. I, I can't. I can't present you data to support my own feelings, but I do think that if you want good results out of sex semen, uh, you need to uh, give yourself the best opportunity. My own feelings would be animals that are struggling. You're unlikely to get good good returns on your investment, but also good results from sex semen. Um, and I think again, um, it was a point that Tristan and Tim wanted. To me to highlight and, and this is the point I'm going to highlight it sex semen for whatever reason is a more fragile product if you want good results from sex semen you really need to handle it properly um, thaw out one straw at a time um, make sure you do the job absolutely right and put it into the cow at the ideal time don't thaw out three or four straws at a time and go wandering around the yard um, it, it really is a product that needs a little bit more care and attention if you're going to get those good results out of it. Sorry, guys, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just fighting with the uh, technology again. Um, so we've spoken a little bit about the benefits. It's only fair for me to highlight some of the other things that if you're going to embark on this, you need to think about. And I'm going to ask Tim and, and Tristan for their comments around this as well. Um, I've talked about the in-calf rates. There's absolutely no shadow of doubt in my mind that sex semen isn't going to give you quite as high a conception rate as conventional semen. But there are trade-off benefits you're making for that. But it is going to have a small impact on your in-calf rates. Um, depending on what strategy we choose to deploy, Carvinies may may be something we need to think about. We were having a bit of a conversation in the room um, before this webinar started about what you serve the remainder of the cows to. Um, you can obviously uh, buy sexed uh, bull beef semen, um, and that might have an impact on your uh, calf value, but it also may have an impact on your calving ease, and that may be something you want to think about. But I suppose in many ways, that's one of the positives of sex semen, particularly if we're thinking about cohorts of heifers where carbonese, direct carbonese is going to be so important to us. Making sure we get a, a nice little heifer out of that heifer rather than a, a bigger bull calf can sometimes be quite important in terms of the subsequent fertility for those animals. Um, I had a couple of questions come in as we were talking. Um, somebody asking me very specifically about um uh what's the bull availability like it is something that i'm sure will improve um but it's something that you very definitely need to think about at the moment there are a limited number of bulls available depending upon your breeding aspirations depending upon what bulls you have used in the past um 
it can just become a slight logistical challenge for farmers in terms of whether there are bulls available that, that make sense for them to use. I think it would also be fair, and again, I'm going to look to the two chaps uh, to my right. Um, it can be a little bit frustrating that some of the best bulls that you might want to use are not currently available sexed. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly pushing at the, the AI companies to, to get crossbred bulls is really what, what we're after. We've got our cows are pretty much in that we're after a one quarter Jersey, three quarter Frisian. And um, so we we need more crossbred animals. And, and so that's, that's the biggest Achilles heel for me after bulls that are crossbred. Yeah, over the years we've had to uh, compromise a little bit on um, getting animals uh, uh, or choosing bulls that are totally suited to uh, uh, a grass-based system, an organic system, something that has a, uh, a value to us. Um, and we've looked at lots of different companies. Um, we started off with uh, more Norwegian Reds. We've looked at um, Irish genetics, New Zealand genetics. Um, and uh, other uh, companies more more locally to us and they all offer us something and we've uh, we found um, that it is getting better certainly and there's a lot more competition between uh, uh, different uh, companies that that sex the straws as well now which can only be good for us and i guess that's you know these are some of the challenges we have ahead of us guys um there's pressure on us from various areas of the industry for us to address some of the issues. Um, many of us are looking at this tool um, potentially because it might convey some advantages to our herd. Um, I think the data's there on on how it works, but some of the logistics and the considerations are things that are still working their way out. Um, if more widely Springbok carving herds took up sex semen. Would that be a driver for some of the semen companies to invest more, put more of their bulls to sex semen, those sorts of things? I think are all relevant um, points, but it is a little bit of a leap of faith at times for farmers when they first get into this. Two nodding heads to my right look weather worn by the leap of faith. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose the other two points, uh, just, just, just for full acknowledgement. It is more costly to use. Um, I think there is potentially a cost return there, depending on you, your circumstance and the logistics. Um, I've certainly got dairy farms that I look after and work with daily who um, uh, who have the data management, have the knowledge, have the control of their herd, that if they wanted to pursue genetic advancement and take selective breeding strategies, that would be very achievable for them. But I do know that for some farms, uh, that will be more challenging for them to achieve. Um, I'm conscious I've got a couple of questions racked up here. So I'm just going to finish up with a last couple of slides with the case study from Tristan's. And then we can perhaps discuss some of those questions. So um, Tristan um, runs a 330, 350 cow uh, dairy farm down in Shropshire. Um, and this is just a little bit of an extrapolation from his figures looking at the impact that sex semen potentially made on calf sale value within his business. So 2017, on the left there, you've got um, the output of his conventional semen strategy. So we've got 100 dairy heifers, um, 65 beef heifers, 65 beef bulls and 100 dairy bulls. We can argue a little bit about the exact valuation we make on calves, but um, I hope you can all sort of get your head around that this is just an example. On the right hand side, we've got the potential results from that movement to sex semen to generate his heifer calves and then more widespread use of beef semen to improve the value of the calves on the rest of the calving cows. So again, we've got our 100 dairy heifers, but this time we've got 119 beef bulls and 119 beef heifers. Oh, Steve's put a build on this slide. That's really going to hurt me now. <laughs> um, so um, on the left-hand side, you've got the value at three weeks of age, the age, do you sell your cows? It depends, but I have to get them um, 
for this purposes, I had to assume a value at a certain age because yeah. so we just keep the dairy heifers on. So, so it was to get an equalised value everything on the day. So we've got the value minus the semen cost. So these figures take into account the fact that it's going to cost us a little bit more to serve these animals with sex semen. We've then got tagging costs and we've got the feed and labour costs being subtracted from that. Slightly larger number of calves in 2018, but only eight, not really significant. Um, and what that brings us to is just over nine grams with increased calf income, which if we take that down to a calf level, produces us about an extra 30 pounds per calf in calf sale value. And I know somebody had asked a, a question and I'm just pulling up the question list as I'm talking about the potential economics from reductions of in-calf rate versus um, increased calf sale value. Um, you'll always see, yeah, um, you'll always see um, uh, slightly different figures put forward. I know um, a guy from Chogus, I went to the Positive Farmers Conference a couple of years ago, and he put forward a figure of um, about four to five pounds per cow per one percent reduction in six week in calf rate. If you go back to the figures I presented you earlier on the potential reductions from that sort of selective uh, sex semen usage we're probably going to finish up with something like a three to four percent reduction in six week in calf rate, um, which would equate to something like a 12 to 15, 16 pound reduction in six week uh, per cow in the herd at six weeks. If we increase our calf value by 30 pounds, that will certainly go a good way, even if we flex a little bit on those numbers to offset it that fertility loss. So I'm not saying there's no fertility loss, and I'm not saying that these figures aren't necessarily bang on for everybody, but it was just to give you a bit of an example of, of what those figures might look like and the potential costs and, uh, and benefits. Can I throw both Tim and uh, Tristan now under the proverbial bus and ask them for their comments, what their feeling is around what sex semen has done to their business? Has it been cost effective? Are you happy with it? Has it had a benefit? Well, <clears throat> certainly last year, Tim speaking, uh, we uh, we still did have some uh, Frisian bull calves and uh, trying to finish those, get those to a saleable value on uh, both organic milk price, organic feed price uh, is, is painful. Um, and um, we, uh, we would like to try and reduce the number of lower margin calves on farm certainly uh, black and white ones or or anything with that h letter in front the holstein uh, breed doesn't really have a good image in the beef industry so uh, by using more um, available beef uh, genetics over more animals because we've already got uh, enough replacements uh, then it certainly adds uh, uh, profit and um, avoids um, what is an unpalatable area of uh, Frisian bull calves with um, with TB around as well. So, yeah, we've certainly worked worked hard, done a lot of sums about it, and uh, and think it works for us. Tristan, yeah, no, I think I yeah I'd agree really with 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 everything you said there, Tim. Um, it, it's it's been exactly the same for us really i mean the, when i simply you know when i try and look at it in a sort of simplified format we've got we've got 300 cows um and if i want 100 replacement heifers which is what we try and keep coming through because we sell off any excess um we like we like to have around about 100 coming through every year um it takes 200 cows to make 100 heifers and that leaves 100 left for beef animals and if i use sex semen it's much closer to 200 cows and there's potentially quite a lot of money in in 200 beef calves um as opposed to 100 beef calves um and and it helps an awful lot with that sort of unpalatable um area of the industry it's hard to yeah um it's hard to justify that to some people uh you know the way the industry works in, in that area so um i'm not trying to i'm trying to get rid of the problem if i can just 
chip my my two penny one thin as well. Um, I work with a lot of dairy clients. Um, we're in a TB hotspot here, and there's utterly no doubt that um, uh, dairy beef isn't the most attractive uh, product for the beef industry, for rearers to, to rear, uh, for processors to buy. Um, and I, I empathize with my clients that they produce a calf and, and there is no meaningful value to that animal, unfortunately, because not, not through their fault, just nobody wants that animal. So I do think that sex semen, we're seeing a lot of processors, a lot of retailers becoming more interested in addressing some of those issues. And I think sex semen has a real potential role to play in helping farmers to overcome some of those challenges and battles they have. Excellent. No, thank you. I, I, I've seen a question come through um, that's also talking about um, the, the extra beef calves uh, hitting the market and the potential that that could suppress the market. Um, I, I did preempt this question actually, and um, spoke to our MI team, and um, we uh, we we don't believe that that is going to have quite the same effect uh, that uh, some of the other areas certainly would. So, um, in the advent of Brexit and, and the potential for a hard Brexit, um, we would imagine that um, uh, the team would imagine there's a it had been mitigated against the the Irish beef entering the industry. Um, and actually, there's there's a, a greater potential for damage to the industry in terms of cow beef um, that uh, that could um, have a problem getting into Europe because a lot of that enters Europe. So I, I don't really want to take that much further than that. But um, but please feel free to contact us if you want to speak to us more about that. Um, but I'd like to just ask Tristan a little bit about um, the the practical elements, actually. Um, and what happens if the worst happens and conception rate is very poor? And what were your backstops for this? Thank you. Yeah. So um, when we when we first uh, you know thought of doing this, we weren't happy with, with going straight out with 100% uh, sex semen straight off. Um, I couldn't get that past the herd manager. Um, he obviously wants to keep a very tight carving block and he wasn't really interested uh, in, in me pushing the whole carving block back three weeks, understandably, and ending up with possibly no heifers. So um, we came up with the idea of just starting service 10 days early. So we started serving with sex semen um, 10 days early. Uh, we just did the, the trial just for the 10 days. So on day one, we reverted back to conventional semen. Um, and then we were going to look uh, after 21 days um, how many repeats we started to have back round again. Uh, if the repeats kept coming, we were going to carry on using uh, conventional semen to make sure we had the number of heifers uh, we required. Um, as it was, we didn't really, uh, the, the, the repeats didn't come round, so we, we didn't need to do it. But it did mean that Actually, if a single cow wouldn't have held to sex semen, uh, it wouldn't really have affected our carving block at all because um, we, as I say, they're all AI'd before our usual uh, day one of service. Um, but it has meant on kind of almost unfortunately, I hope it's a good spring because all our cows are carving middle of Feb this year as opposed to uh, end. But uh, yeah. Um, and, and actually further from that, um, I, I'm assuming in that sort of system, if you're using breeding your most fertile cows at the start of your block to sex semen, um, what sort of impact does that have um, having all of your heifer replacements born at the start of the block? Can, can I ask that to you, Tim? Yeah. Thank you, Steve. We, we certainly have noticed that uh, as we... Uh, uh, tighten the uh, amount of heifers in the block, um, then uh, it makes calf rearing an awful lot easier. If they're spread over 14, 15, 16, 17 weeks, and you've got uh, uh, totally different growth rates, totally different calf rearing uh, uh, paddocks and availability of grass, they've got a lot of catching up to do to hit our uh, uh, 800 gram target or 0.8 of a kilo growth growth rates. Uh, I noticed uh, another question um, 
how a New Zealand sex results from frozen semen from Europe. Uh, certainly, they they've come up with some um, slightly lower than what we've experienced um, results. Um, I think it's it's certainly um, we've had very good years. We've also had uh, years where the where the heifers have un underperformed. So we had a a year of 84 84% conception rate followed by one under 20% which was a killer and very nearly put us off um but we've we've dug back in um and kept going and certainly it's become a lot more reliable and we'll we'll continue uh, um using it uh, certainly this season on more cows for a, a tighter block to generate um plenty of replacements early on as well and do the same as Tristan spoke about. We'll monitor um, repeat rates very, very closely to make sure that we've got sufficient held in that first cycle, uh, and then that gives us options to uh, to do something about it early on, rather than getting to the uh, third week and find we've got a lot of repeats from the first first cycle. Yeah, one of the things I would say uh, is is on a similar point really it, it, I said it was a hard sale for the the herdsman or potentially a hard sale for the herdsman but it wasn't for the calf rear if they were keen as mustard for this plan they you know they want all their calves on the ground quick um they want all those calves born with as short a period as they can all the heifer replacements born in as narrow a period as they can so they can so a nice level even bunch we rear them in groups of 50 two groups of 50 so um if they can be all five days apart it, it does make calf rearing a lot better and, and get them out and clear the sheds before uh, nice and early so they they have the cleanest sheds and, and they're out and healthy uh, in the paddocks earlier um i've just noticed a couple of questions which i'll field one of them and i'll tip back to the guys uh, what are your thoughts about serving with sex semen and turning the cows straight in with a beef ball? Um, don't do it to yourself. Uh, I had a dairy client um, three years ago uh, use conventional semen and for practical reasons, having uh, timed AI'd every single one of his heifers, he then tipped the beef ball in. Without fail, the Hereford went and nibbled all of the heifers. Um, if you put... Um, uh, frozen AI semen up against the beef ball. Do trust that the beef ball will uh, will get all those heifers in calf. So at least give them a break before the beef ball goes in. Uh, the second question uh, on these to the to the two farmers: Have either of you served any heifers born from sex semen? If so, what was their fertility like? Uh, I haven't anyway. I haven't been here long enough to got to that point yet. Yes, yeah, I'd say um, about half of our heifers uh, this year um, and last year would have been, um, so the ones in calf and the ones that have calved down last year would have been uh, sex semen uh, products and no real difference um, in their fertility, um, partly because we we do make that as a, a choice. Uh, we're, we're constantly looking at uh, uh, fertility as one of our uh, criteria for bulls, um, along with uh, many other things. So, yeah, we haven't seen a, a drop in fertility in uh, sex semen heifers of. And you really shouldn't do. Um, I mean, logically, the, these animals are the same genetics uh, from, in many cases, the same bulls we have available to us. It's just a preferentially the the heifers, not not the heifers and the bulls. So, so that there wouldn't be any genetic logic to um, the progeny of a sex semen service being any less fertile than you would expect it to be from its genetics from the bull. Uh, could they could potentially be better? Uh, one might argue because if that cow is held to a sex semen, she's sex draw she is potentially more fertile so you might you might argue it might be uh they might be more fertile maybe that's what the question is getting at yeah um it's an interesting point tristan makes almost the darwinism uh uh survival of the fittest argument which you know is a perfectly reasonable logical argument that if they can hold to sex semen they should be able to hold to anything then maybe you will uh it might be a slightly hard way of looking at it but maybe you will self-select your more fertile cows out through it excellent L lovely dave um 
I th we're coming towards the end now and I, I can see some of the questions that are dropping off but um uh, I, I wonder if I can put Tim on the spot very quickly um we spoke a little bit about conception rate and I, you didn't mention any figures but if you were to consider a difference um in where you were with sex in comparison to uh conventional semen uh what would be your figure you'd put on that yeah we've uh, we've analyzed it a little bit and I've got a screenshot to bring with me so i have some uh, accurate uh, figures and it does um vary between both but uh, certainly um we were just a shade and uh, averaged across heifers and cows uh, just a set shade under 70 percent vaccine and um which delighted with the best we've ever done was 84 percent as i mentioned before um so no i'm more than happy with that com compared with the conventional uh, which was um yeah just a little bit above above that so uh, we've we've still got room for improvement and uh, things will will improve the more uh, protocols and uh, the more good reasoning we've put behind um cow choice and uh, we have a fantastic heifer rear which all, always helps as well and we do a lot of uh, um spotting of heats um with uh, three different uh, uh guises so one with tail paint um one with uh, plenty of watching both um during the uh, early evening and a heat detection aid as well so the more things we can throw at it uh, the more chance we can uh, uh, avoid uh, missing that um that cycle tremendous thank you so much for that tim um and and thank you to to everybody every one of our guests um i i think uh what i'll do is i'll try and round that up if there's any more questions please just do feed those in um my email address is stephen that's with a ph dot west at ahdb.org.uk for the breed for better campaign we are looking for case studies we're always looking for case studies so um i'd be be really grateful if you could get in touch um in terms of uh, a summary um I, I mean there's so many points to, to take from today but um there uh, there's certainly benefits to to the use of this this new technology uh, and indeed the old technology but uh, uh, I think uh, you've just got to be ready for a slight drop in in calf rate and conception rates evidently um although that drop is far less these days and that's been evidenced now um I think that uh you need to make sure you give your cows the best chance to conceive. I think Tim made that that point. Um, only breed from those uh, with the right history that have got a good chance of getting in, in calf. Um, as sales go up, I think there's a there's certainly a relevant um, chicken and egg conversation about uh, bull availability and will there be crossbred bulls available? And I think that's certainly something to put back to the uh, semen companies uh, and and uh, we would hope that uh, as as usage goes up bull availability will also go up um, and certainly in terms of benefits I think we can clearly see um, there is uh, benefits in terms of consistency of sizing of, of replacement heifers um, of um the the best amount of time for them to grow and of course the ability to ring fence those against uh, calving disease um and uh, and calf disease so um one point again that tristan made that i i'd like to re-emphasize is that you don't have to go all in i mean tristan uh, is calving his first sexed heifers uh in a week's time on valentine's day i think uh to starting on valentine's day um so uh so um yeah so you, you can you can front load your heifers and you can uh you can you can gain confidence in the technology by doing that for your first year uh so in terms of tools and resources we've got a huge amount of tools and resources and there's ever more um ever-growing library we've got the ahdb calf resources which you can see from the link there uh, we've got a new in calf uh, resource book which is uh, imminently going to be released uh, there's a semen usage calculator which allows you to 
put different conception rates and calculate your return from your calf sales. Uh, we have that available from this link. Cogent and Genus also have a similar type of uh, calculator available from them, so please get in touch with them. Uh, and we also have a heifer rearing cost calculator. It's a rather underused tool in the in the um, in the industry, and we really want to to promote and and get people uh, using that and calculating exactly how much it does cost them to rear their, their heifers. So um, uh, lastly, I'd just like to, to thank uh, all of my guests once again um, and thank you all for listening and goodbye.